Nice launch check and countdown net. Pad is clear. Ten, nine, eight. Launch auto sequence seven, has started. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Go for launch. Dragon, separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing legs have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. You are looking at a live view of Falcon 9 set to lift off at 9.56 a.m. Eastern Time from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Happy New Year, everyone, and thank you for tuning in. I'm Shiva, and I'm a space operations engineer here at SpaceX, and I'm joining you from our headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Today, we are launching SpaceX's Transporter 6 mission, and as the name suggests, it's our sixth dedicated small sat rideshare program launch. This mission will mark our first launch of 2023 and our 200th mission of all time. Now, on this flight are 114 spacecraft, including CubeSats, PicoSats, Microsats, and Did orbital transfer started? vehicles carrying spacecraft to be deployed at a later time. We'll have a total of 82 deployment events, which will begin around the T plus 58 minute mark, and they'll last for approximately 30 minutes. Now, we are expecting to lose ground station coverage partway through the deployment sequence, so only some of the deployments will be visible today. However, when we're back in range of those ground stations, we do expect to have telemetry and hear audio confirmation over the nets. Now, if you'd like to see a full list of today's payload deployments, head over to SpaceX.com. With liftoff just about 6 minutes and 20 seconds away from now, let's take a moment to learn more about the Falcon 9 that's on your screen. Now, to give you a sense of scale, this Falcon 9 rocket is standing about 3 meters short of the height of the Taj Mahal in India. It was named after the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars, and it gets that nine number from the number of Merlin 1D engines that are at the base of the rocket. Stage one fuel load is complete. What you see on your screen are the four key parts that make up the rocket. We've got the first and second stages, the black inner stage in between them, and then at the very top, the payload fairing. The first stage is the bottom two thirds of the vehicle. We refer to it as the booster, and it's got those nine Merlin engines that do most of the work to get it off the ground and into the thinner parts of the Earth's atmosphere. About two and a half minutes into the flight, the first stage will separate and make its way back to Earth for a land landing at landing zone one, which is on your screen. If you're keeping track, today's mission marks the 15th flight for this particular booster. Now on top of the first stage, we've got that black carbon fiber interstage. It connects the two stages, houses the pneumatic pushers that allow the first and second stage to separate during flight, and also houses the Merlin vacuum engine during ascent. On top of the interstage, we've got the second stage, which is what's carrying the 114 spacecraft and will take them to their eventual destination in orbit. Shortly after launch, be sure Falcon to watch the. For pressurizing for strong back retract. Be sure to watch the velocity gauges that'll show up on your screen. You'll see how fast the first stage and second stages are going at separation, and you'll notice that the second stage continues to increase in velocity as we get to orbit. Now the spacecraft are enclosed in the very top of the rocket in that large nose cone structure, which is called a fairing. Strong back its job is to. Uh, protect the satellites from the aerodynamic loads until we are out of the Earth's atmosphere, at which point the fairing will separate and expose them to the vacuum of space. You heard some callouts on the net there that we've begun pressurizing the tanks and begun pulling away the strongback. The strongback refers to that truss structure to the left of the vehicle. And we are just about T minus four minutes to go until launch. Currently healthy on the vehicle and the payloads. Propellant loading is uh, almost fully complete on the first and second stages. We've completely loaded fuel uh, on both the first and second stages and are finishing up liquid oxygen loading on both stages. We'll hear a call out around the T minus three minute mark for LOX load complete on the first stage and a similar call out on the second stage around the T minus two minute mark. Looks like an absolutely beautiful day in Florida. 
based on the weather report, we're only tracking a 10% probability of violation. So that means that we are a 90% chance of go weather. But for whatever reason, if we were not to launch today, we do have another opportunity tomorrow at the same time. Stage one locks load complete. So with that call out, liquid oxygen loading is complete on the first stage. We'll hear a similar call out on the second stage. Now our goal with these missions is to provide small satellite operators competitive pricing, increased flight opportunities, and flexibility. We're flying some really cool payloads on this mission, including spacecraft design to help monitor weather and environmental changes, as well as greenhouse gas emissions, spacecraft that improve communications for the Internet of Things, and those that also help measure and investigate galactic cosmic rays and solar rays. It's incredible how even the smallest satellites can make a meaningful contribution to the care of planet Earth and our efforts, efforts to visit other worlds. We are looking forward to providing a great ride to the 114 payloads on board today, just about two minutes from now. Next major milestone will be a call out for second stage locks load complete. Once we hear that, we will be fully loaded on propellants for the launch attempt in about two minutes. Stage two locks load is complete. So with that, we are fully loaded with about a million pounds of propellant on the vehicle. You'll see some uh, clouds coming out from the vehicle. There they go. These clouds are coming from the transporter erector lines. Now the transporter erector provides the propellants uh, to the vehicle. We're just clearing out the lines and the cold. All right, guys, close up the cold oxygen that is in those lines ends up coming into contact with the moist Florida air and produces literal clouds around the vehicle. Coming up, next major milestone will be Falcon 9's transition into startup. That means that the flight computers on board the first and second stage will have taken over the launch countdown and they'll continue to have control of the vehicle through the rest of the mission. Next major milestone will be the launch director giving their final go for launch. Go for launch. And with that call, all systems go for launch. Let's watch as this Falcon 9 takes the Transporter 6 mission to orbit. T minus 30 seconds. Just about 40 seconds into flight, Falcon 9 clearing the tower at Space Launch Complex 40 and making its way to orbit. We are currently throttling down uh, the Berlin 1D engines on the first stage in preparation for the point of max Q. That's the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Maximum aerodynamic pressure is the point when the highest stresses are experienced by the vehicle during the ascent. With that, we are through the highest stresses on the vehicle. Coming up, we've got several events back to back. The first of those is main engine cutoff, or MECO. There we'll shut down the nine Merlin 1D engines in preparation for stage separation. Stage separation is where the pneumatic pushers 
will separate the first and second stages. And then we'll have second engine start number one. We just heard a call out for MVAC chillin, so we've begun chilling in the turbo pumps in preparation to start the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. While the second stage engine is burning, the first stage will be performing a flip maneuver, and then it will do a boost back burn. That boost back burn will ignite three of the Merlin 1D engines uh, to make the first stage's way back towards land, since we are attempting a land landing today with this first stage. So again, those events back to back, Miko, stage separation, first stage flip, second engine start number one, and then the boost back burn. Stage one shut down. Stage separation confirmed. Invac ignition. Stage one boost back startup. So there is those five events. Awesome shots from the ground. You can see the first stage boosting away. That was on the left part of your screen and the second stage continuing to burn. Now this burn on the first stage will last about uh, 47 seconds. And the second stage is going to continue burning for a while. It won't complete its burn until the T plus eight minutes and uh, 20 or so second mark. Shortly after the boost back burn ends, the next major milestone will be fairing separation. You'll see that on the right hand side of your screen. Stage one boost back shut down. So there is successful shutdown of the boost back burn. You're seeing some pulses there from the ground from our attitude control system. We use nitrogen gas as our attitude control medium, and it helps us keep pointed in the correct direction. Here you can see the bursts firing on the first stage on the left-hand side of your screen as we are also deploying our fairing grid fence. separation confirmed. On the right-hand side of your screen, you just saw fairing separation. We may get a view of those fairing halves. In fact, you can see it on the right-hand side of your screen, just behind the Merlin vacuum. Heading back to planet Earth, we will be attempting to recover both of these fairing halves once they land back in the water on a recovery vessel named Bob. Now, if you're just joining us, welcome. We're about four and a half minutes into today's mission. We're in the first of two Merlin vacuum burns. First burn will last until about the T plus eight minute and 20 second mark. Next major milestone will be the first stage's entry burn. First stage is on the left-hand side of your screen. And we're now looking at a view uh, down the body of the first stage, past two of the grid fins back at planet Earth. Now we execute the entry burn in order to slow down the first stage before hitting the densest parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Vehicles are on a nominal trajectory. Without that burn, we'd be only using the atmosphere to slow down the Falcon 9, and that puts a lot of extra stresses on the rocket. So we ignite three of those Merlin 1D engines to slow down as we hit the thickest parts of the Earth's atmosphere. We had an on-time liftoff. 9.56 a.m. Eastern Time from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And we're carrying the Transporter 6 mission on the second stage right now. It's SpaceX's sixth dedicated SmallSat rideshare program and our first mission of 2023. We're targeting at least three dedicated rideshare flights, two sun synchronous orbit per year. And we also offer opportunities to ride to orbit on our Starlink missions, which launch about once a week. Now, these small sats can ride to space on our Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and the Starship vehicle in the not too distant future. You can see that the grid fins have deployed on the first stage. We've got four of these hypersonic grid fins near the top of the stage. And uh, once we get into the thicker parts of the atmosphere, it's only the grid fins that do the steering to make our way back to landing zone one, you can actually see the space coast of Florida there on the left-hand side of the screen. Next major event 
coming up in about 15 seconds. Set, uh, that's the first stage's entry burn, but we'll ignite three of the Merlin 1D engines. Stage two, FTS has saved. Now keep an eye on the speed of the first stage in the lower left corner of your screen. You'll see that- Stage one, entry burn startup. Drop off dramatically as the entry burn is slowing us down. Pretty quick burn. This one will last about 20 or so seconds. Nominal trajectory. Stage one, entry burn, shut down. And there is successful shutdown of those Merlin engines. Now, as we are slowing down, re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, if you're uh, in the Florida area, you may hear some sonic booms. Stage one, FTS has saved. We are attempting to recover this booster for the 15th time today, targeting this land landing at landing zone one. We've got just one more burn, which is the landing burn on the first stage. We'll ignite just a single center Merlin engine. That'll happen uh, just before touchdown. Stage one, transonic. On the right-hand side of your screen, we've got a ground view of stage one. You can see the center engine stage has one ignited. Landing burn. We'll expect to see the four stage landing legs deployed guidance. for a soft touchdown at landing zone one. Now, during this, we'll also hear a call out of second engine cutoff on the second stage. Stage one landing leg deploy. Seco. Stage one landing confirmed. So landing is complete. We also heard a call out there for Seco. Nominal parking orbit. Seco is second engine cutoff number one. We just heard a call out as well for nominal parking orbit. And with that, we have landed the Falcon 9. It's our 161st landing of an orbital class rocket. This booster is 15th. Now coming up, our next major event will be in about 45 minutes. That is for second engine start number two. And that'll be followed shortly by payload deploy of the first 35, excuse me, the first 35 payload deployment events. So we're gonna leave you with views from space and we'll see you back shortly for Second engine start number two. Expected loss of signal, Cape.
Acquisition of signal, reef. We sat there, 25th century AD. We sat there and looked at the rockets on Mars, and you just boggled the mind and mind and mind and mind. And the technology caught up, didn't it? Acquisition of signal, Maldives. Welcome back to our coverage of the Transporter 6 mission. We've had a great mission so far. We lifted off on time at 9.56 a.m. Eastern, recovered our first stage at landing zone one, and completed the first of two second stage burns. Now we're coming up about 20 seconds away from a quick reignition of our Merlin vacuum engine. This burn will just be two seconds to circularize our orbit. So coming up, second engine start number two. And there is successful startup, SES-2, as well as second engine cutoff number two. Nominal orbit insertion. And with that call out from Mission Control, we are in the expected orbit. Now, as I just mentioned, you are watching the Transporter 6 mission. This is our sixth dedicated rideshare mission and SpaceX's first mission of 2023. The Falcon 9 lifted off at 9.56 a.m. Eastern Time from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. We successfully separated the stages, landed that first stage at landing zone one for our 161st recovery of an orbital class rocket. And we just completed the second of our two planned second stage burns. If you're not familiar with our transporter missions, they are dedicated rideshare flights. SpaceX is targeting at least three sun synchronous orbit missions per year, in addition to various opportunities for a ride on our Starlink missions, which launch about once a week. The small sats can ride to space on our Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and in the not too distant future, Starship. Now we've got 114 spacecraft, including CubeSats, PicoSats, Microsats, and orbital transfer vehicles carrying spacecraft to be deployed at a later time in the mission. And as I mentioned earlier in the webcast, we are flying some payloads that are really cool to help monitor weather, environmental changes, greenhouse gases, satellites that improve communication for the Internet of Things, and satellites that will measure and investigate galactic cosmic rays and solar rays. Now, for the 114 spacecraft, there will be a total of 82 deployment events. Those will happen just past the T plus 58 minute mark, so just about a minute from now. And the payload deployments will last approximately 30 minutes. Unfortunately, we only have partial ground station coverage for the deployment sequence, and the ground stations are how we get our telemetry and these live views of the second stage. So we won't have uh, coverage of all of the deployments visible today. But once we get ground station coverage back on the other side of that blackout, we'll expect to have telemetry and hear audio confirmation of the payload deploys that will occur during that period. 
It's also worth mentioning that because these spacecraft are being deployed in groups in quick succession, we may not be able to confirm every deployment in real time. While you will hear most of the callouts by our mission control operators, we will try to provide updates for any that we don't hear real time by the end of the webcast. We do have a full list of the payloads on SpaceX.com if you'd like to follow along. But for now, we're going to listen in as the payload deployment sequence is about to begin. Wait, sat one. Separation confirmed. BD sat two. Separation confirmed. Lemur two. Immaculate. Separation confirmed. Lemur 2, Buen Tentaha, 01, separation confirmed. Connect to T1.2, separation confirmed. Gamma Alpha, separation confirmed. Bro 8, separation confirmed. New, separation confirmed. Huygens, separation confirmed. Lemur 2, disclaimer, separation confirmed. Star Vibe, separation confirmed. Lemur 2, Steve Albers, separation confirmed. ISI launch, Cleos KSF3A, separation confirmed. Berkland separation confirmed. Space B 156 167 separation confirmed. Expected loss of signal, reef.
Lemur 2 and Molo, separation confirmed. ISI launch Cleos KSF-3B, separation confirmed. ISI launch Cleos KS F3C separation confirmed. Lemur 2 Falari, separation confirmed. ISI launch Cleos KS F3D, separation confirmed. Flock 4Y, separation confirmed. Bodies, expected loss of signal. Space BD, ISI launch Poly 10 from Kiev, separation confirmed. Flock 4Y, separation confirmed. Guardian Alpha, separation confirmed. Flock 4Y, separation confirmed. Flock 4Y, separation confirmed. Space BD, Sony, Sphere 1, separation confirmed. ISI launch, Clyde Space, NSL SAT 2, separation confirmed. ISI launch Sternula 1, separation confirmed. Flock 4Y, separation confirmed. Flock 4Y, separation confirmed. Flock 4Y, separation confirmed.
Block 4Y, separation confirmed. Now at this time, we've had confirmation of 33 out of the 35 deployments, but because the spacecraft on this mission are small sats, it can be sometimes difficult for us to confirm the deployments in real time. So we're gonna confirm with our teams and provide an update a bit later on in the broadcast. Now, I mentioned it earlier, but we are entering into a telemetry blackout period. During this time, we're expecting to deploy an additional 20 payloads. This loss of signal will last until about the T plus one hour and 16 minute mark. So we'll be back just before then to get confirmation of the payload deployments that occur during the telemetry outage as well as we'll be standing by for those final 27 deployments while we have telemetry back. For now, we're going to leave you with some space tunes, and we'll see you back around T plus one hour and 15 minutes. Expected loss of signal, big war.
Welcome back to our webcast coverage for the Transporter 6 mission, SpaceX's sixth dedicated small sat rideshare program. Now, we've had a successful liftoff at 9.56 a.m. Eastern Time from Space Launch Complex 40 in Florida. And so far, we've had 33 confirmed separation events. We're currently awaiting callouts for another 20, which occurred during a telemetry blackout where we didn't have access to ground station coverage. We're also getting ready for the final 27 spacecraft to deploy. For that full list of payloads we're flying today, head over to SpaceX.com. Also, really quickly, because these spacecraft are being deployed in groups in quick succession, we may not be able to confirm every deployment in real time, so we'll expect we may need a few extra minutes to confirm these final deployments. Let's listen in. Acquisition of signal, forward. Separation of 20 payloads confirmed. Flock 4Y, separation confirmed. Flock 4Y, separation confirmed. Flock 4Y, separation confirmed. Flock 4Y, separation confirmed. Block 4Y, separation confirmed. Flock 4Y, separation confirmed.
Link Tower 3, separation confirmed. Albania 1, separation confirmed. Link Tower 4, separation confirmed. YAM-5, separation confirmed. Acquisition single, POGO. New set 34, separation confirmed. Albania 2, separation confirmed. First ice ice satellite separation confirmed. Umbra, separation confirmed. Umbra, separation confirmed. Set 35, separation confirmed.
Ion SCV-007, Glorious Gratia, separation confirmed. Ion, SCV-008, Pierce Franciscus, separation confirmed. Launcher, Orbiter SN-1, Space Tug, separation confirmed. Second ice eye satellite, separation confirmed. Skycraft, separation confirmed. Expected loss of signal, small wire. Figure 5, separation confirmed. Amera Leo 1, separation confirmed.
Acquisition signal, boss. Dragonfly Aerospace, EOS Sat 1, separation confirmed. As you may have noticed, we were able to confirm 77 of the 82 deployments. Now, because the spacecraft on this mission are small sats and because some of them deploy in close proximity to another, it can be difficult for us to confirm the deployments in real time. I've heard from our teams that we likely won't be able to make confirmations in the next few mi minutes. So we're going to end our live broadcast here, but we'll provide an update on those final confirmations via our social media platforms as soon as we receive them. We want to thank you for watching today's launch and we'll see you next time.